Baragada Yahawa, Baragada Yahawah Shai, Bahashem, Barakaha Kwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who ruled and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiyam out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. This is the Brother Raiah with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon, and that's speaking of Babylon the Great, the virgin daughter of Babylon, the biblical name for the United States of America, an assembly of great nations from the North Country, and that North Country is speaking of Russia. And the reason it's known as the North Country is because when we go to a map of that Arctic Ocean region, which is uh, to the north, you've got the United States of America right here, that Arctic Ocean region, and then what? Russia, north of the United States of America. And that assembly of great nations from the North Country is not just speaking of Russia's allies like China, Iran, or North Korea, but also the allies of the United States of America, Britain, France, Germany, these other NATO nations, which at some point during World War III, which is also going to take place according to biblical prophecy, are going to turn against the United States of America and ally themselves with that North country, Russia, and her allies, and they're all together going to shoot 200 million nuclear missiles onto the United States of America, turning it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, and then a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland afterwards. Read Revelation chapter 17, verse 16, and the ten horns, speaking of the EU or European Union, which thou sawest upon the beast, NATO, these shall hate the whore, the United States of America, Babylon the Great, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire, nuclear fire, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. And those arrows are speaking of those nuclear missiles. Because when the prophets saw these visions thousands of years ago, they weren't going to say a, a Satan II or a Sarmat RS-28, a Zircon hypersonic missile or anything like that. They described it the best way they could with what they knew during their times, ancient weapons of war, like bows and arrows, spears, javelins, flying swords, etc., etc. And I opened up the video with this verse to preface an article from Reuters.com titled, NATO Allies Wake Up to Russian Supremacy in the Arctic. And again, here's a map of that Arctic Ocean region. You've got Russia, the North Country right here, and I've done uh, a lot of videos in the past on this very same topic showing that Russia has been building up its military presence in that Arctic Ocean region, nuclear capable, and it's a well-known fact that Russia shooting missiles from itself across the Arctic Ocean region to the north, as well as shooting missiles from its assets in the Arctic to reach the United States would be the shortest trajectory time for those missiles to reach the U.S. And hey, this is all through the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai that the Russians are building back up their presence in that Arctic Ocean region hey, to more easily shoot those missiles onto the U.S. and fulfill biblical prophecy. And I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm just going to jump around to hit the main points. Over recent years, NATO allies and Russia have scaled up military exercises in the region. Chinese and Russian warships conducted a joint exercise in the Bering Sea in September. Norway raised its military alert level in October, but the West trails Russia in military presence. Again, all through the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai to gear that North Country up to a uh, more easily shoot their missiles onto the U.S. Since 2005, Russia has reopened tens of Arctic, Soviet-era 
military bases. And what should come to mind, Ezekiel chapter 38, and I will put hooks into thy jaws and turn thee back. The Most High putting these Russian Edomites back in that old confrontational Soviet Union spirit, modernized its navy and developed new hypersonic missiles, which are nuclear capable, designed to evade U.S. sensors and defenses. Four Arctic experts say it would take the West at least 10 years to catch up with Russia's military in the region if it chose to do so. And with the way things are looking, this place doesn't have another 10 years. The chief of the U.S. Northern Command, General Glenn Verhurk, told a Senate hearing in March the United States needed better Arctic domain awareness to detect and address Russian and Chinese capabilities to launch advanced missiles and destroy communications infrastructure. Let's go to another precept. This is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 43. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, Salakia, and his hands waxed feeble. And uh, the king of Babylon is ultimately talking about these uh, elites like your Rothschilds and Rockefellers who run the United States of America, but it can also be talking about the the president of the U.S. the or the king, hey, as well as these uh, other higher ups in the government, and military leaders, you name it. But as it says, the king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. Best believe that the powers that be watch these videos because they understand that we are the true Hebrew Israelites and they see that everything we've been preaching through the scriptures is coming to pass. And hence, hey, the U.S. is trying to play catch up in that Arctic Ocean region to uh, try to combat Russia and its military presence there. But according to biblical prophecy, it's all futile. The U.S. will be destroyed by Russia and its allies, as well as the U.S.'s own allies turning against her and them all together shooting those nukes onto her. Anguish took hold of him and pangs as of a woman in travail. The chief of the U.S. Northern Command, General Glenn Van Herc, told a Senate hearing in March the United States needed better Arctic domain awareness to detect and address Russian and Chinese capabilities to launch advanced missiles and destroy communications infrastructure. Hey, the king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble. In a Pentagon strategy document released in October, the United States committed to improving early warning and surveillance systems in the Arctic, but the pace of the planned modernization is unclear. There are few risks in the near term, U.S. officials and military analysts say, the West is far stronger than Russia in conventional forces and Russia's limited success. So they say, in Ukraine exposed weaknesses many in the West had not expected. Russia's military efforts are currently mostly focused on Ukraine, leaving very limited strength of personnel on the army side in the Arctic Kola Peninsula, which is home to its Northern Fleet Navy and nuclear submarines, according to Christofferson. U.S. missile defenses are designed to defend against limited attack from a rogue state, and the United States has expressed confidence in its ability to deter a nuclear attack by Russia or China, but insufficient visibility in the Arctic could limit U.S. response time in a crisis, a situation Van Herc and other officials want to avoid. But let's see what the, the scriptures have to say about the U.S.'s confidence in its ability to deter a nuclear attack by Russia or China. This is Joel chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain, which is exactly what the men of the Lord, the prophets of the Most High, chiefly through GMS or Great Millstone are doing by going out onto the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this online. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is nigh at hand. And when we read articles uh, 
like the one we're reading, hey, we can clearly see that the day of Yahweh is very nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, speaking of the nuclear missiles, there had not been ever the like because these nuclear weapons came about very recently, beginning with those two atomic bombs dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima at the end of World War II. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. When these nations go to shoot their nuclear missiles, every single one is going to be fired. And then after the dust settles, Yahabashai, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus, along with the 144,000, who are fishers of men right now, preaching this word, are going to be hunters of men in that day with those new spiritual bodies being like 144,000 black atoms going and gathering up the remaining heathens after this nuclear destruction, beginning with the elites and slapping chains on them so they can begin serving that thousand years building up, that first thousand years of the kingdom of heaven, building it up. And... Uh, Abarat says, I'm, I'm of that number. Hey, we're never going to allow you to build weapons of war anymore. A fire devoureth before them, speaking of the warhead at the front of the missile, and behind them a flame burneth, that rocket booster at the back. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. The land looks normal. You've got cities and people and parks and life going on as regular. And behind them, a desolate wilderness. After those nuclear missiles hit their target, the land is made desolate like Fallout or Mad Max, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness, or ash, or soot, these people getting burned up by those nuclear missiles. They shall run like mighty men, they shall climb the wall like men of war, and they shall march everyone on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Hey, because the spirit of the Most High is going to be on those missiles, guiding them to their targets without a hitch. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And that sword is uh, symbolic for these anti-missile defense systems, which are going to fail in that day because the spirit of the Most High is going to cause those anti-missile defense systems to fail so those missiles can reach their targets. So, hey, the United States should not have any confidence in expressing its ability to deter a nuclear attack by Russia or China. Because in the scriptures, it says when those nuclear missiles hey, are going to their targets, those anti-missile defense systems, that sword that they're going to fall upon and not be wounded by, are going to fail, allowing those missiles to reach their targets. Read a little bit of this. Russia's dominance. At the moment, the military balance in the Arctic is heavily weighted towards Russia said Colin Wall, research associate at Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington. Russia's base inside the Arctic Circle outnumbered NATO's by about a third, according to data compiled by the International Institute for Strategic Studies, IISS, and Reuters. Russia now has 11 submarines capable of launching long-range nuclear weapons for use in an all-out nuclear war, eight of them based in the Arctic Kola Peninsula, according to the ISS. NATO has 22 between the United States, France, and the UK. In July, Russia's Navy took delivery of a new submarine, Belgorod, which can carry the Poseidon torpedo, a new nuclear-armed stealth torpedo designed to sneak past coastal defenses by travailing along the seafloor. Russian state media have said Poseidon could cause a giant tsunami that would turn the coastline into a radioactive desert. Moscow also has over the last two years tested the hypersonic glide missile Zircon 
which Putin said in 2019 can reach nine times the speed of sound, making it the world's fastest. In February, it said the missile was launched in the Arctic waters between mainland, Norway, and Salvabard. Ah, that's it. Let's see, with this article, you get the point. Yeah, but as we can clearly see, that North country, Russia, is gearing up to eventually shoot its nukes onto the U.S., along with its allies and the allies of the U.S. that are going to turn against her. Let's get back to these precepts. I'm going to jump down to Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 41. Behold, a people shall come from the north, Russia, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth, from the ends of the earth, Russia's allies like North Korea, Iran, and China, but also the allies of the United States that are going to turn against her and ally themselves with Russia and her allies. Again, Revelation 17, verse 16. And just recently, as it says on this article on usnews.com, North Korea test fires ICBM with range to strike entire U.S. North Korea has fired an intercontinental ballistic missile that landed near Japanese waters in its second major weapons test this month that showed a potential ability to launch nuclear strikes on all of the U.S. mainland. You best believe these North Koreans who have gotten help from their, their allies, Russia and China, to uh, advance their missile weapons technology are going to shoot these nukes onto the U.S., North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile that landed near Japanese waters Friday in its second major weapons test this month that showed a potential ability to launch nuclear strikes on all of the U.S. mainland. Uh, yes, it, you get the point. They shall hold the bow and the lance and what a bow is shoot arrows so the silos and other launch platforms for these nuclear missiles they are cruel and will not show mercy their voice shall roar like the sea and they shall ride upon horses everyone put in array like a man to the battle against thee O daughter of babylon that virgin daughter of babylon the u.s and when you read psalms chapter 137 about verses 7 to 9 you'll see that the edomites or these so-called white people, are synonymous with being the daughter of Babylon. I'm going to jump up to verse 40. As the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, and besides being known as Babylon in the scriptures, the United States of America is also known as spiritual Sodom and Egypt, as pursuant to Revelation 11 verse 8. It's very easy to see why the U.S. is known as spiritual Sodom. This is the number one nation that pushes the alphabet lifestyle beginning with LG onto the rest of the planet through Hollywood, social media, and its uh, political policies. And then look what happened back in June, Pride Month. And then there was a movie that just completely bombed at the box office called uh, Bros, which dealt with two sodomites having a, a relationship with each other, save Yahweh. So shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. When those nuclear missiles hit this place, again, it's going to turn it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, and then a desolate, uninhabitable wasteland afterwards. And after and a man, woman, or child is never going to set foot on this place ever again. And after a time, only desert creatures are going to dwell here, as it says up in verse 39. Therefore, the wild beasts of the desert with the wild beasts of the islands shall dwell there, and the owls shall dwell therein, and it shall be no more inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. And when everything's said and done, the former United States of America is going to stand as an eternal memorial as to what a wicked kingdom looked like, how not to govern the earth, and what the judgment and punishment was for afflicting the apple of the Most High's eye. The true children of Israel, who are known as the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today, 
Hey, who are primarily being afflicted in Babylon, the United States. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akiem and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. As we can clearly see, we're almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites, primarily from the daughter of Babylon. So as always, I'm going to say a bad babol, kwam yasharala, and until next time, shalom.